Okay. Okay, we're going to talk about records of survey, not for very long, 20 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. Okay, so what is a record of a survey? Record, what is a record of survey? It is an official record of your survey. That's why we call it a record of survey. We say record of survey, but if you actually read the law, it's, uh, it's like, it is a record of your survey. Record of a survey. We call it record of survey, but that's what it is. In Montana, they're called certificates of survey. Okay. 99% of the time, they're used for boundary surveys. Okay. Occasionally, you'll see them done for control surveys, but not. That's not what most of them are for. Yeah, in that case, it's typically a, a city or yeah, it's a city or a county, county or county something county. or state agency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do surveyors do records of survey? To clean up title. Wrong. We'll talk about that. That's a good guess. Why do we do records of survey? We have to. Yeah, because the government says we have to. That's the main reason why. Oh. Okay? And I'm going to explain that in a second. Now, there are times when a surveyor might do a record of survey because he wants to preserve evidence. And that's a very good thing. That's a, it's a good thing to do with a record of survey. Preserve evidence. It's a beautiful thing. Nobody ever does it, <laughs> myself included. Why not? It's expensive. Yeah, it's a, nightmare. it's a nightmare to file records of survey. If they made it easier, I would file more of them, but they don't. So I'll give you an example. When I was young and an idealist, brand new license, I got called to do a survey up in the mountains next to Kirkwood on Highway 88. We found some old, old public lands corners, rock mounds, and pieces of barren trees um, that won't be there in another 25 years. And so even though I didn't have to by law, I tried to file a record of survey to get all, preserve all that evidence. Like, hey, I was here on this date. This is what we found. Here's where it was at. Um, and the county, the county surveyor wouldn't file my map. And he basically said, I'm not going to file your map because you didn't hit one of the legal requirements. The law says I can file, a, a licensed surveyor can file a record of survey for whatever he wants. Then it says, if you find these certain things, you will, no choice. So I have the choice to file it whenever I want. Then there's a set of things that I'm required to file. And he basically told me, since you didn't hit any of the requirements, required triggers, we call them triggers, I'm not going to file your map. And I was young and didn't know any better, so I just rolled over. So yeah, there's some beautiful evidence I found up in Kirkwood that will probably never, get seen, never be seen again for the rest of human history because the freaking county surveyor was a jerk. But, okay, so. He wasn't a jerk. He was an idiot. He was an idiot. He was an old crusty fart, and it's just the way it is. So, so sad. There. I'm not saying that I would net you that you, you know, there. If we lived in a different world, I would file more surveys to preserve evidence. Okay, but we don't. What's it cost to file a record survey? It, it, if you, if I eat my time and I just pay the filing fee, what am I going to be out roughly? A grand. It's Five never. Grand. It's almost never less than a grand. <clears throat> Now there are counties like Orange County in California that, that let you file a record survey for free. Why do they do that? Because they want more of them. Because what do they want surveyors to do? File, to file surveys to preserve evidence. So they said, hey, it's worth it to us. We're going to waive the fee. Just get your survey in here. Okay? But most counties in the state are not like that. Why? Because people like to make money, Pat. And public works departments make money from record survey filing fees. Okay. So. Most of the time, when we're doing a record survey here at BKF, why are we doing it? Because we have to. The law says we have to. I hit a trigger. Okay, we're not going to go way into the weeds on the triggers today, but I'm going to basically give you the rundown. This is the easiest trigger to figure out. If the parcel has never been surveyed in its current configuration, and we're going to go survey it, we got to file. So if the parcel was created by deed or carved up by deed, and nobody else has filed, we have to file. Has drawn a map of it. If, yeah, if nobody's drawn a parcel map, a subdivision map, or a record survey of that parcel, we have to file. Okay, That is 90% of the triggers we hit here. Okay, and the nice thing about that trigger is you know before you you know before you propose on the job. Like, can we figure out if that parcel's shown on a map? Yep. Mm -hmm. You go look. Is it on any maps? Nope, we gotta file. That's the easiest one there is. That's the one we do the most often. <coughs> what if it's shown on a plaque? Doesn't matter. It's got to be. A, it's got to be a record survey, a parcel map, or subdivision map. If it's not on one of those three, you got to file. 
If it's on a plat, then the guy who did the plat should have filed. Yeah, the guy who did the plat should have filed, pretty much. Okay, and we get that all the time. I get copies of all the surveys that some other surveyor did of a parcel not on a map, he didn't file. Now we gotta file. So basically, guys that follow the law get punished. That's the beautiful part of the system. Okay, but we work for a good firm, they're ethical folks, we file maps. Okay, if you're a boundary surveyor and you're not filing a couple records of survey a year, you're breaking the law, period. Okay? So that's the main trigger. There are a couple other triggers that are a little tougher because they're gray areas, but in theory, if you find something on the ground that doesn't match up with what's in the what's on paper, either in another map or a deed, so either the measurement doesn't fit or there's a big discrepancy in the monument, you're supposed to file. Now there's a judgment call there, but those are a little harder. The other problem with those couple of triggers is when do you find that out? After you've, when you're done. After you've already given the client a proposal. So you gotta you gotta weigh that risk and figure out how you're gonna handle it. Handle the, the pricing the risk with the client. They either pay up front. So the, the way I like to do that is every freaking boundary survey gets a what? Retainer. Gets a well, yeah. You charge them for a record of survey. And then if you get into it and you don't have to do one, great, they get a little money back. But you just plan on doing one for everything you do. Because if you don't take that approach and you don't price it with the client, what ends up happening? You have to do it and they're not going to pay you. You're going to eat it because the law doesn't say, Landon, you only have to file a record of survey if the client pays you. What does the law say? You have to do If that. you find these things, Landon, you will file, whether you're getting paid by the client or not. I just cut an $850 check for a record of survey on something that I let my name get put on that another surveyor started. It was at a different company. My boss didn't want to pay for the map. My name's on it, so guess what I get to do? Pay for it out of pocket. I ate the drafting and I'm paying the fee to get that map filed. That's the mylar you plan to print it this week. I've got another one sitting on my desk from two jobs, three jobs ago that I have to file and I'm just waiting to have the extra thousand bucks to pay the filing fee. Because it doesn't matter if the client didn't pay for it or the boss didn't pay for it, who's licensed? You. And that, the law says the licensee shall file, right? Okay, so. Makes you wanna get licensed. <laughs> you know what it is, you know why we have to do it, let's talk about what goes on What They're actually way simpler than most people realize, okay? So I'm gonna give you a list of what you, what you have to show, okay? I got an example here. So we're surveying, we're surveying this parcel for Mr. Blake. It's a piece of this bigger parcel, okay? We found these mons, okay? We're setting these mons, okay? By the way, if you're setting monuments, that's another trigger, sorry. If you're setting monuments, you gotta file, unless you do a corner record, which is tricky. Just if you, if you set monuments, you gotta file. Okay. All right, so here's what goes on your record of survey. Number one, monuments found. Where'd you find it? What'd you find? Number two, monuments set. I give credit to this for my old boss, Chris Niemer. He, he's the one to help me explain this as simply as, as, as it is. Okay, monuments found, monuments set. Okay. There's, people call this different things. So my old boss would call it record, record, measured, calculated values. Those are the three types of values we get. I just call that your boundary resolution. You gotta show your boundary resolution. How did you decide where to put the line? Did you hold this record angle? Did you extend that line? Did you hold those two mons, right? Did you do some proportioning? We'll talk more about all that stuff, but you gotta you should explain that. Okay? Record measure count for your boundary resolution. And though you guys that work with me, you know what I mean when I say boundary resolution, right? I hope. Um, Pat, you haven't done it with me yet, but okay. it's how you take it it's how you take the lines in the deed and put it on the ground, basically. Based on the available evidence. Oh, is that what you okay. did with like the CRC, how you like brought it brought in the, all that line work into the geolocation and then like it was on the ground technically kind of like that yeah right it's kind of like that okay so you show your found mons your, your set mons how you resolve your boundary that's basically it gentlemen it's it's those three things is what you're trying to do on your record of survey okay now I'll give you some extras okay so extras over here you know it's nice to throw some labels on there 
<laughs> right? Identify your parcels. Okay. It's nice if you show adjacent right away. Lake Avenue, the railroad. Okay, with some widths. Those are nice, to, nice to have. They're not always essential. Okay, and then I like to do number six. If you're a good surveyor, you put a survey narrative on there. And you guys have worked on those with me, right? That's our standard set of notes, right? What are you surveying? Who are you serving it for? Why are you surveying it? What'd you find? How'd you, how'd you process other people's surveys? Um, what was the result? Just, you know, it's usually a, it's, I don't know, it's a couple pages of Word doc, right? If I died, how many times have you guys looked at a survey with me, especially an older survey, and you're looking at it, you're like, I have no idea what this freaking guy was trying to do, right? That's the point of a survey narrative, okay? That's basically it. Let me just explain this measured versus record versus calc real quick with an example. So our deed says that the distance between these monuments is 40 feet and 200 feet. So what's the overall distance? 240. 240 is the record. Okay, we go out there and we measure it, we find 238 feet. So what type of value is that? Measured. Measure. 238, measured. Okay, now, right here we found them on, okay? Can I have them measured on this line? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. It's not there. The only time you, now, surveyors break this rule all the time and it drives me crazy, but in order to have a measured distance, you gotta be able to do what? Measure it. Measure. What are you gonna measure if there's nothing here? So what do you gotta have on every line where you have a measured value, you should have what on each end? Or something you're measuring to, a wall or a fence or a building, but there better be something physical on the ground or you can't have a measure. So, now it has a record, the record's 40 feet, okay? But if we measure 240 here, if we measure 238 and the record's 240, is our, is, are we gonna have, when we put this line on the ground, is there gonna be, we set this on, is there gonna be 38 feet? Is there gonna be 40 feet between those? No. Which one got cut out of the paper? Right, so we got it. So let's just say this one got cut out first. Okay. So what's this distance gonna be, Logan? Calc 38. 38 feet is where we're gonna put this monument. That's junior, senior rights. We're not going to get into it. We'll teach that later. It's 38 feet. What kind of distance is that? It can't be a record. It doesn't match record, and it can't be a measured. So what do we call it? Count. count. That's a something we count. Record measured count. That's how you resolve your boundary, right? Now you might also, on an angle, I might. You guys have seen me do this. I'll come in here and I'll say, hey, I, I held a record angle there and went over this distance, right? Or you might say, hey, we split curbs on Blake and, and we shot rail on. Central Sierra, and that's how we came up with these two lines, right? That goes in your survey narrative. That's just your boundary resolution. That's it, boys. That's all there is to a record of survey. Not that hard, right? Pretty, <laughs> pretty small. Well, yeah. The boundary resolution can be hard, but drafting the map's not that like. No. What do you got to show on a record of survey? There's like four. Th there's th only three things you really have to show: bound lines, set lines, how you resolve the boundary. Okay. So when you start one of these from scratch. Mm -hmm. Is it just a blank CAD file, or are you importing something that's already no, like halfway it's, done? It's blank. It's blank? Yeah. Oh, okay. Somebody brings me a D, and they say, I'm on my corner set, and I want a map. That's what we do here. Oh, okay. Right? Now, by the time you guys get this to start working on it, what do I usually have done? Boundary. Usually you have Someone a line. Code code right? And I, and, you, and I explain to you how I'm doing it, right? And pretty soon that's going to be Mike. Mike's going to be the guy that gets the D and comes up with lines. Okay, and you guys are going to learn how to draft his maps. Okay, but that's basically it. Now, for those of you that are taking the test, the LS, California LS, there is a specific set of things in the LS Act, California Business and Profession Code, that have to be on your record of service besides what I showed here. They're all technical items, that's why I didn't put them on here. So, north arrow, scale, one inch margin, your seal, and your signature. But those could be on a test question. So, I just want to explain, right? Like, that's all technical stuff. I didn't put it up here, but yeah. You can't have a record. If you do a record of survey and I put my name on it, it doesn't have a north arrow, I should be executed on the spot. Take me out to the back, shoot me in the head. Right? That's required by law. Okay? Put you down. Just put me down. That's it. That's today's class. Remember to take out that edit. Oh, yeah. I got to take it out where I called the county surveyor Dick. <laughs> so sad I didn't go on that survey. Yeah, well, wasn't it you? It was wasn't me, it and, me and uh, Brent. Yeah, I got that one. He, uh, he had Brian up there too. A little bit. 
Man, it's hot in here. That county line still goes through that bar, doesn't it?